Greetings and welcome to the Artifact Electronics channel. In this episode we're going to repair this television. It is a Sony Trinitron model KV-8A-D2O. It, uh, it has an 8 inch screen and uh, it can be powered off of AC or an external 12 volt DC source. I bought this at a thrift store or a charity store as it's called elsewhere in the world. It was uh, relatively cheap but one of the problems was that I couldn't find a matching power cord for it uh, in the store so I basically had to buy it untested but it was cheap enough so I brought it home. I found a power cord in my box of stuff. It's a non-grounded polarized uh, plug. I plugged it in and uh, pressed the power button several times and nothing happened. Now I've checked this out before because in a previous video I repaired a bench power supply and uh, I used this television as a final test for the power supply to see if it would power it and uh, properly regulate the voltage. And uh, this was the power supply. I did succeed in turning on the TV. It powered off the 12 volts and consumed about 1.6 amps. But let's go ahead and see uh, if we can figure out what's wrong with the internal power supply. What this means is uh, we've, I've already narrowed down what to look at. It is, it is most likely the internal power supply that converts the uh, 120 volts coming out of the wall to 12 volts DC. So let's take her apart and see what we got. I took apart the TV. It was very easy, two screws in the back and uh, the top of the case lifted off. Here's what we see inside. Right in front is the AC power supply uh, and uh, it comes out it's sitting in a slot. It comes out pretty easily. The rest of the TV is we have the main CRT controller board or chassis as it's also called. CRT itself the neck board and the, and the TV tuner. Now when I opened this up originally uh, we'll zoom in on the, this is the input fuse to the power supply and the input fuse to the power supply looked like this. So it uh, met with a quite violent end so something is shorted on the primary side of the power supply uh, which could be, well at this point could be anything. One of the most common failure modes in switching power supplies is that one of the one or more of the capacitors short and uh, thus provide a, uh, a, a, a dead short to the AC input and uh, that's why this fuse would blow and if it blows that violently it didn't happen gradually it must have been a power surge or, or, or an immediate short or something like that. So in order to investigate this further, let's remove the uh, power supply board from the TV completely and along with the help of the schematics have a look and see what needs to be tested. Here's a schematic and uh, it basically consists of the AC input section over here which takes the AC, rectifies it, smooths it and passes it on to the actual switching regulator which is in here. The switching regulator, the voltage that is coming out of the AC, the rectified voltage is going to the, uh, <clears throat> to the output transformer and at the same time there's another winding on the output transformer that senses what the actual output voltage is through, compar through comparator circuitry over here 
This transformer basically runs at a certain frequency, thus doing the pulse width adjustment for the voltage waveform that's appearing on uh, the first winding of this. It pretty much senses what is the voltage. If the voltage is too low, increase the duty cycle, and if the voltage is too high, decrease the duty cycle. It then comes out on the output end, is uh, rectified, uh, smoothed, and running through the output fuse here is supplied to the instrument. Here's the board itself, and one of the most common problems uh, for switched mode power supply failure is that one or more of the electrolytic caps will short. Generally that's accompanied by physical changes such as uh, the ele electrolyte leaking from underneath the capacitor or the uh, top bulging. Now just looking at this uh, none of the capacitors uh, seem to display those characteristics. Uh, and we, we don't really have that many of them here. We have the main uh, we have this capacitor sitting on the output right after the AC is rectified. We have this capacitor sitting in the PWM circuit, I mean electrolytic, and then on the output side we have these smoothing guys, which look, which all look good. Now I started just testing things and the first thing I got back was that this capacitor uh, showed a short in circuit but it just did not display did not display the signs of being shorted however I removed it from the board and uh, using an ESR meter such as this uh, I measured it and out of circuit it measured perfectly and basically had an internal resistance of zero ohm so it couldn't be in better shape so we had to look somewhere else and um, I started looking at paths to ground from uh, here. Alternate paths to ground. This is that capacitor. And uh, uh, there are several possibilities in here. Uh, but another, another very common thing going bad in these supplies is that <clears throat> the, P, the, the, the switching transistor over here that generates the PWM will short. So I had a look at the transistor in circuit and uh, there it is. I'm pretty much just doing a diode test on, uh, on this transistor. Pretty much showed short between all of the terminals. So this obviously had a catastrophic failure. Now one thing to watch out for is that when a transistor like this blows it usually tends to take along some of its companions with it. Now in this case there's no pre-driver on the transistor uh, but I went in and in circuit checked the capacitors, the non-electrolytic capacitors, which all checked out fine. The diodes were of course my next suspicion. This is the comparator circuit here that has kind of a unique uh, configuration of having two 10 volt zeners in parallel. Not exactly sure why that would happen because look, theoretically <clears throat> The uh, parts in there were half amp parts, so if you put two of them in parallel, you end up with a one amp part. I mean, it's not that simple though, because the reverse breakdown voltage is never exactly the same in two parts, even from the same batch. So one of these, when they're both functional, one of these is always working harder because it breaks down, because it has a uh, lower breakdown voltage and will break down before the other one. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure why they would have two of these <clears throat> two of these in parallel but I checked uh, I checked all of the diodes out of circuit 
and these two both look to be bad and uh, pretty much what they look like is uh, let's see can we see that here it's in, in the diode setting So the forward measurement on this one looks normal, but the reverse measurement showing a breakdown voltage of 1.7 volts. So this one's obviously bad. Now its companion can do the same test and measure the forward voltage which is half of what the forward voltage was on the other one which in itself is a bit strange but then when we measure the reverse voltage it shows 0.8 volts so they're basically turned into a much a much lower break uh, breakdown voltages and they're pretty much acting almost like a resistor because the voltage is over here are generally higher than 1.7 uh, than, than, than a couple of volts. That was probably causing the uh, transistor to be on all of the time and uh, it eventually self-destructed through the feedback loop I would think. Now what does a... Uh, I got some replacements and uh, I couldn't find uh, half amp parts, so I got one amp parts, but just to measure them for comparison's sakes it's showing uh, it's showing a normal looking forward voltage and the reverse voltage on it is as expected, or as it should be uh, at the voltages that the meter uses, which aren't even approaching 10 volts it shows an open. So those two those two uh, diodes that I removed were definitely defective. Finally, for good measure, I went in and did uh, checked all of the resistors, and uh, their values were okay. One odd thing I did find was that when measuring the uh, output transformer in circuit, the primary windings showed very low resistance, less than an ohm. <clears throat> now, I, uh, you know. I, I, I really don't know what resistance to expect from this but I do have some parts boards from uh, other switching supplies that I've removed from LCD TVs where the screen has gone bad but the supply itself still works and I did some comparative measurements on the output transformers on those and they also showed relatively low impedances on the input side so uh, so I'm thinking that that is normal uh, and uh, and we will just try it out with that transformer in place. It also happens relatively rarely that the transformer goes. It's usually something else that will go bad before the transformer goes out. Now looking at the repairs I made Let's see, I replaced the switching transistor over here and gave it a good helping of a thermal paste and here are the two diodes that I replaced and I mounted them slightly off board uh, to maybe give them a little better uh, capa cooling capability. I reinstalled the power supply and connected everything, plugged the power in. I apologize for all the glare, but uh, I was unable to find an anti-glare filter. So everything's ready to go now, and uh, we will give the power button a try. That is promising. I heard a click, and the power light came on. And it's a tube, needs to warm up, but it is displaying video 
and uh, the flicker is from the camera. It actually has a steady display. Uh, so by seeing the video, it's the power supply is obviously working. One thing we can do is switch it from uh, video mode to TV mode. And uh, there we have beautiful noise. And what we saw underneath was the tuner trying to pull in a station, but because I don't have a digital tuner box right now, uh, I can't show anything on the screen. However, we will remedy that. And what I'm going to do is hook up a video game to the video input, and we will see how well this works. Here's the setup I'm going to use to test the TV. It's an Atari 800 computer with the memory maxed out to 48K and an Atari 810 disk drive. And the game we're going to use is a game called Kid Grid. This is uh, this was the first game I wrote for the Atari 800. Lots of fond memories and some not so fond memories, but uh, that was a long time ago. And fortunately I had a publisher for this game, so I didn't have to put the game into Ziploc bags and drive it around town trying to sell a few copies here and there to some stores. And uh, so let's have a look and load it up and see what it looks like on the TV. Let's load the game. There it is, it's a 16K game, so the load time is very quick. And here we go. The geometry looks good on the TV. Colors look a bit washed out in the video, but they're actually more saturated in real life. So I think. Uh, I think the repair was a success and uh, it's going to be a really useful TV for me to test out old games and and relive the old days. So I'll be testing some other uh, computers and uh, consoles with it to make sure that things work, but I think this is going to earn a permanent spot on my bench somewhere. So whenever I want to look at something with an analog TV, it, it is there and ready to go. Thanks for watching. Subscribe please if you liked what you saw. And we'll see you at the next episode.